interested in the economic potential of cryptocurrency, others have ventured into the space through the doors of art and culture. Web3 presents a new opportunity for creators, collectors, and innovators to come together and create a new era of collaboration, creativity, and ownership. So joining me are some of the experts in the space. Um, if we could just go down the line and introduce yourself, who you are, and what you do. Hi, my name is Ja. I'm the founder and CEO of Playground. We're a Web3 community activation platform. Uh, my career I spent mostly in advertising and media. Um, so we're backed by a global ad agency, and yeah, I'm, we're here to build decentralized Web3 social media. Hello, everyone. I'm Natalie from Numbers Protocol. So I'm the uh, global outreach lead, mainly talking to a lot of people, partners, creators, artists, try to help them to onboard with Numbers Protocol. Hello, everybody. My name is Mombat. I'm an artist, a toy designer, and a world builder. And I'm a founder of a brand called Mumbot World, and also an international creative community called Ghost Club. Excellent. I'm so glad that you guys are all here. Um, let's dive into it. So you all come from very different backgrounds, but I know that there are a lot of things that we have in common, and I know that we're all seeing the art and culture spaces evolving as Web3 becomes more applicable or mainstream. Um, so what are the biggest changes that we're seeing in the art and culture spaces because of Web3? I can, yeah. I can take that. Please I do. <laughs> um, some of the biggest changes that we're seeing is just the ability for artists to connect directly with their collectors and actually build community um, versus in the past that there was a middleman or you know a gallery setting and then you wouldn't really be able to work directly with who's collecting your work. And now there's, there's a lot of other elements as well involved in that, like collaborating with your collectors and adding utility to your, to your project or to your artwork. Yeah. I think one thing uh, I see uh, a lot, the biggest difference is that the ownership of the content. So like in numbers, we uh, like as a asset entry driven protocol where uh, we support the content creators to ensure their provenance and authenticity for their, for their content. I think this is a huge difference that where we, will be, we won't be able to see in the Web2 internet, where uh, your content, once it goes to the Instagram, goes to Facebook, where you already lose control of those. So I think this is a huge difference. I think this would also bring a lot of impact to the artists where they can have more space for creativity, more channels for them to showcase their works as well. Yeah. Um, from the community platform side, we've always endeavored to make it as easy as possible for artists to organize, grow, and monetize their community. Um, so what's been happening that I see is that as the DAP that wants to make it super easy, that's powered by infrastructure. And there's just a lot of infrastructure that's been built. So a lot of those Lego blocks, um, I'm seeing that it's kind of the era of integration. And so um, hopefully we'll see artists just start to not um, have to, you know, like find the brand they trust and that in, on the background, all of the infrastructure right now, I see collaborating, deal making, the actual, you know, um, collaborations happening so that all of this infrastructure can connect. And then what I'm seeing is the deal making with middlemen, so like with ad agencies that have direct access to brands or talent agencies that have direct access to artists. Um, so yeah, I think that it's all clicking together and becoming super real and soon I think we can point to like amazing use cases that unleash artist creativity because the, um, the, <laughs> the technical aspects are getting sorted right now and um, a lot has been built and it's, it's coming together. Yeah, and we sort of touched on this relationship that's changing in, in addition to the tech that's becoming a lot more accessible. So from an art perspective or from a platform's perspective, what was that relationship like previously and how are you seeing it today in terms of creators and, and content platforms or galleries? I can go again. Um, I think there were a lot of marketplaces built. Again, it was infrastructure where you might see duplicates of something and a lot of different platforms. Um, I think because traditional social media was built for audience building, so it was very much like promotional, one to many, I'm going to push out content. Um, there was a, 
like Web3 is about community. And so a lot of these platforms, they might have not built the community social aspect, even though they got the minting or like there's been a lot of talk about royalties. So I think um, just coming next, it's uh, I think you don't see those forums where you can build community quite easily, like Reddit, Twitter, Telegram, WhatsApp. Those are all actually Web2 platforms. So um, yeah, as we see some of these art focus platforms uh, kind of realize the features that are needed to build community around that artist, then, then we'll see kind of more of those social features. Natalie, did you have anything to add? Uh, I think one thing, because I also have been talking to different like, museums, uh, galleries, I think their, their roles uh, in this cultural creativity domain is also very interesting because they see the technology has been like growing out of ground and there's a lot of debates or discussions with artists as well with the NFT. So like for the museum or gallery, they have to also keep up their path to learn more, to educate themselves before they can educate their community, their audience. So I think we are still seeing that how, we are still very exciting to see how this will grow, but also to see more uh, museums, galleries, inst institutions join in in the path of like how Web3 or the decentralized way of working on the content could be very uh, dynamic in a way. Yeah. So if, I don't know if I understand the question completely, but um, I think that Web3 has been very empowering to artists actually realizing and coming to the realization that they are the platform. And when you have your, you know, when you do build community and you have, you know, people who want to support you and your growth as a living artist, um, I think that that's one of, the, one of the coolest things that I've seen. And I, I'm also working all the time in Ghost Club to try to, you know, help other artists and creators to understand you know, best practices in the space, like using Web2 tools and Web3 tools and understanding like smart contracts and how to uplift each other is like one of the best ways to, you know, function. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, if you're not a big project, if you're an individual independent creator, um, what, what better way than like with another group of independent creators? And uh, Natalie, you sort of mentioned that there are a lot of um, education is a big component of onboarding. So, from that perspective, how are we, in, you know, encouraging people to educate themselves? Where are some of the challenges that we're seeing in terms of Web three education for artists and creatives? I think, well, mostly from our own team, uh, when we start here to talk to the creativity industry, they're already a gap here where how we can really educate them because there are a lot of tech words like the wallet, the cryptos, when people think about cryptos then they're already, already maybe 10 miles away from you and uh, we've also put a lot of efforts in there like how uh, the materials can be more easily to be read or like more uh, step by step in uh, structures to, to get them through on board to the product. But also that we uh, try to work with uh, uh, people who are already in the industry and people who know about tech and the art world so they can be the translator in between. I think that that's very important to have artists like Mombas already in the decentralized world, and they could help the other, the rest of the creators, to get into it. Because I think, like, I also believe that that's also a co-create or or it's a like help center, a help group that help each other to really uh, step into this new world. Because I think it's also a new world for most of the people, including us as well. Yeah. I really like what you said about you know. Obviously, the artist is the platform. So, you know, as a platform, I realized that not only is everything totally owned by the artist, and that's the royalties discussion, but um, as you create and as you invite people and as you grow a community on a platform, you should also own a piece of the actual platform. So it's not actually you have brought your community to, you know, um, a YouTube or some uh, like a, a Facebook or you know, a Discord, any Web2 platform, uh, as you bring your creative energy to it, I think that's why we have our own, you know, incentives, which is like you actually co-build Playground or you co-own Playground. And then everything that the platform incentivizes should be about collaboration because when you're an artist, you can grow by 
collaborating with others and eventually you're your own business and your own big brand and then you can kind of now sponsor and support other artists to give them the platform and the cycle continues. Mamba? We're talking about education and um, yeah, just how that plays into what you do. Oh, yeah. Um, well, in Ghost Club, for example, we bring in people who want to do workshops with our community um, like about cybersecurity or how to build your own smart contracts. Um, we've had uh, workshops with Third Web. They've come through and we've had Manifold come through. We've had, um, we're, we're talking to Ledger to come in and just teach the importance of self-sovereignty. Um, yeah, we, we do all kinds of education and, and even simple, even simpler than that, we have people in there like learning Blender and people teaching other people how to use other programs like After Effects or, you know, it's really, really awesome. The, that was another thing that I was gonna say that, that's so cool about Web3. It's the growth that I've seen like firsthand, not just in myself, but other artists in the community who have gone from, you know, having a pretty limited scope of work and what they were doing to now working in like five different mediums, including digital art, because now there's a whole collector base of people who just collect digital art. And that's not new. That's been around for a long time. But, you know, it's different now, right? Like the ownership part is what makes it different. So it's very exciting. Yeah, and I know we sort of spoke about this outside briefly, but we were talking about how you were doing digital art for many years before you actually got into Web3. So how has that sort of changed your practice and how you approach art? Um, it's very exciting for me because I had to lean in to my 2D work for so many years. Um, and also as a mom, like I didn't really have a chance to do some of the more tedious animation parts of my, my mediums that I like to work in. And then I got into toy design, literally hand sculpting, resin casting, you know, making the molds and everything. And now I do like all kinds of stuff. You know, we're building a game in Unreal Engine. Um, I'm working with a studio to build a game in Sandbox. We're doing, uh, like I can't even, I, there's so many things, but the fact that I can create illustrations or animations and I actually have people who wanna collect that, not just like show work in the gallery or whatever. And then there's so many unlimited possibilities. Um, it's very, very exciting, I, yeah. And I know when people think about uh, digital art or Web3 art, blockchain art, they think about NFTs specifically. But there's so many other tools that people can use, that creatives can use in order to express themselves. So from across the spectrum, what are some of the tools that you're seeing creatives use um, when it comes to art and culture and fashion, music? Yeah, I think we've been talking a lot about visual art, but I've seen a lot of creatives be really excited by this one tool that translates, you know, their um, written art into any language. So what that does for writers and musicians and um, yeah, all the other types of, I don't know how it would work for poetry, <laughs> like you know, it would break the rhythm there, but I think that's super powerful. Um, new ways of storytelling. Yeah, and Natalie. Yeah, well, if we mention about a creative creation tools, then I definitely have to mention uh, the Capture app, which is also one of the applications that we make. So it basically is a camera app where you can create uh, media, photos, uh, images, uh, sorry, photos and videos that with the on-chain proof. Because once you uh, once you create through the app, it's already registered to Numbers blockchain. So that's how you can have on-chain proof. And also within the app, you can mint as NFT with a few tabs only. And also it also can be seen as a marketplace where people can just collect your NFTs or as part of the licensing where you would like, you would like to authorize to others. So, and also because Numbers is helping the creators. So we are also collaborating with a lot of content platforms or uh, creation tool platform. Like those uh, videos creations, one of our partners who like create this uh, platform where they help or they use the AI technology to help the video creators to find a, a match music with AI's help. So there are a lot more, uh, let's say, creation tools. They are also getting into the Web3 as well. Yeah. 
And from your from the artist's perspective, what other tools are you interested in? Um, I, I'm really interested in how artists are utilizing technology to excite people outside of Web3 and onboard people. One way is through like PO apps or awardables, like badges you can give to someone who doesn't know anything about NFTs and make them excited that, hey, we interacted with this thing and now we can be, you know, receiving this cool NFT and it's free, it's pretty easy to use. Um, I also am, like personally, I used AR in a show that was more for my toy audience and that blew everyone's minds. And you know, it's like just a little something that you can put in a physical show where there is no crazy tech that you know of and then you just like see, oh, there's another layer to this. And that's exciting to people outside of Web3 because you know, just a little something, a little seed of that makes people excited. If you, if I were to do more, it might be too much, you know, and may, might be too, it, it would be too much and then they, they'd be like, ah, this is crazy. But, um, but yeah, there's also the, I, I really love seeing artists utilizing like the, dyna the, uh, the potential of dynamic NFTs versus static NFTs. You know, people can make something that changes over time. A friend of mine just did um, an animation that it's the, in the code of the smart contract that the artwork will change de depending on what day. So it'll be like a GM in the morning, it'll be a GN at night. It's the, you know, stuff like that, little things like that that are very exciting to me. I love what you said about um, like how the experience and kind of gifting people art as the PO app, because it is so much about um, community. And so um, on Playground, the back end tools, there's creator tools and then there's kind of like loyal, re, loyalty and rewards tools. And that sounds super corporate, but it's a, it's a new way to reward people in your community for participating. And so how do you tell this proof of play or proof of participation? It's the things that you not just attend, but the things you collect and read and watch and um, um, do in the community. Um, and so I think something really interesting, like you said about PO apps, is the NFT ticket could be the PO app itself or NFT itself. Um, so how, do, how does an artist gift before, during, and after an experience, an experience that brings their values to life? So for instance, after this conference and after this event, instead of just having a static ticket, I think that there's really creative ways to make a memory out of an experience and then it almost becomes like, experiential art or performance art that we all came together in this moment to do. So I'm seeing a lot of um, people use our platform in interesting ways to post event kind of be like, oh, here was the, here's like gifts, NFTs from the people in attendance. Here was the soundtrack that was playing at this party. Here's the uploaded videos and um, the, the UGC photos so that collectively this was an artful moment and sometimes the artist wants to curate that but either way it's like if you participated in that moment that was meaningful I think uh, there's just interesting ways to twist the tools that are out there like ticketing even. Yeah. Natalie did you have anything? I think I just want to add one more thing is that I think uh, by the how Web3 has been growing I just see more creators out there basically every one of us is a creators. Cause be, yeah, before you might feel that maybe who someone who can draw, who can design, can be a can be a creators. But in the current, well, maybe the social media also allow us to become uh, influencers out there. But I think by how Web3 has been growing is basically everyone is a creators by participate in the event by like maybe just uh, take a photos and mint as an NFT. Those has been part of it as well. And they are also the resource of the, the creators. Those are the materials for them to create another more interesting, maybe cool design as well. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, that's, that is another really exciting thing. But also I think it's really cool how some collectors are also who, like people who were never art collectors before. I think that's really cool. I think that it's interesting when like, you can provide different things for different people who maybe never, they were like more degens and now they've been like, oh, this is an actual piece of art. And like I tie physicals to my NFTs often. So if I've bundled it and someone finds out like, oh, I can get this, I could get this and maybe win this raffle to actually have the original artwork and I've never had a painting before in my life. 
it kind of changes, you've changed this relationship with this person and made them appreciate something that maybe before they might have looked at it differently. Like some, you know, some of the NFT degens don't really think that way, but yeah, and they I do. Yeah, and I was gonna say, I think also what's interesting that I'm hearing is that there's a lot of co-creation between artists and their community, and it's sort of that back and forth relationship that chains how, changes how the art is perceived and how it's created, which I think is also... Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, like I did a, I did a, I did a, a piece that, this is gonna be long-winded, so I'll try to say it really fast. I hand sculpted this figure, and then I did a 3D scan of it, and then I brought it back into like another medium and I hand 2D animated on top of the 3D thing that I made. <laughs> and then the utility was that the collector who won the auction could collaborate with me on the art direction. And so then it became a collaboration by the end. And that was, that was exactly like, that's an example of something really cool that you can do with NFTs that you could never do before as an artist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a few minutes left, and I did want to touch on creator royalties, like Ja brought up. Um, there has been a lot of discussion about uh, creator royalties. Some platforms are willing to honor them more than others. Um, how can we unify collectors, artists, and marketplaces to a point where everyone wins? Um, yeah, as a platform, we have zero creator royalties. I mean, like, yeah, we don't charge the artist anything, and we do. We believe they have should have 100% ownership. Um, traditionally, and I came from the ad industry, right? I've seen how that industry really fueled all of that commerce and um, data economy of Web2 Social, which we all didn't like. Uh, doesn't mean that those um, dollars shouldn't come in to support and give creators sponsorship or opportunities so i believe creators shouldn't be charged anything of anything brands need to enter a platform and an ecosystem where they're um they have to go and empower creators through the lens of their communities and show up in ways that are meaningful to that community Absolutely. natalie uh well i'm not quite sure about unifying is is if this is something possible to achieve. But uh, in the Web3 world is that all the creators would have the way to prove their content authenticity. That means that uh, their content can be easily flow to any of the platform. Especially there are so many marketplace platforms out there. A lot of platform actually made by the artists themselves as well, because they, they see that the current platforms don't really help them at all. So how I feel is that um, the, the creators should have a way to protect themselves for their content. Then also the market will tell the marketplace that what would be the best way for the royalty. Yeah. Yeah, my bad. Well, I, I like creator royalties. I am all for it. Um, I think that over time, um, when people see the way the culture has affected the, the whole ecosystem and they see that artists were thriving with royalties and artists didn't leave because it was hard. They're gonna still make art, whether it's hard or it's bare or it's bull. Um, and so this is like, you know, you just have to keep showing up and you have to show that you're gonna keep working hard and that you're executing. And hey, guess what? Ro royalties help me do this. If you like what I'm doing, Pay me you know, for it. Can, can you, you know, here's some, it's almost like here's some ways that you can participate and then, you know, we kind of do, we help each other sort of thing, so, yeah. Love it. Ja, Natalie, Jade, thank you so much. I have merch I'm going to throw out yeah. into the crowd. Throw out your merch, let's go. Yeah.